Most of us know what doesn't work and what works. Most of us know when we're screwing up. Most of us know what we should do, but we don't do it. And the reason is because in that state of mind, you're not going to. I'm, if you want, I'll, I'll go on a rant on, a, on what is my <laughs> highest level uh, mission right now. Yes, please. Okay, okay. So for decades, my obsession has been, you know, what makes the difference in people, right? Why do some people, you give them everything, love, joy, tremendous education, economic well, well-being, and they end up going in and out of rehab all day long. How many actors, actresses, wealthy people have you seen do this? It's, it's sad. And then there are people that life has just beat the hell out of, right? It's been, people have gone through physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional, spiritual abuse. And many of those people, rather than being broken, become so hungry, so driven, because they don't want anybody else to experience that. I'm an example of that. That they become masterful in things, right? But along the way, it's like, okay, so what am I really about? I said, I'm really, my real mission is to help people get what they really want. And help them have what I would call, you know, you might say, I want to lose weight, I want to make more money, you know, I want to have a better relationship. But what people really want is an extraordinary life, a magnificent life, which to me is life on your terms. Not Tony's terms, not your friend's terms, not your, not even your spouse's terms. Like, what is going to light you up in this life? And once people know what that is, you need two skills to get there. One I've taught for decades, the science of achievement. And you know, you know me well enough, and I know you well enough, that we both have been obsessive about finding the strategies that can help people get the result they want faster than they ever have. And you're brilliant at it, and I'm really good at it, and we have a lot of friends that are really good at it. But most people can figure that out. We can help them do it faster. And I, and I think that's a great service, and I love being able to do that. And I love knowing answers that can help people so quickly. But the, it's a science to achieve, meaning if, you're, if, if you look around, and I, you know, I, I wrote a book, I think you know, about a year ago. I spent four years on it, and I wanted to answer the question, how do I help people financially in a world where most people are suffering, yep. especially with the markets in turmoil? And I thought, I don't have those answers. I have some answers. The people have the best answers, the ones you should go, go. If you want to achieve something, find somebody who's the result you want, and model them. Success leaves clues. Go find out, right? My original teacher, Jim Rohn, taught me that. I never forgot it. So I went out and interviewed 50 of the smartest financial people in the world. You know, everybody from Warren Buffett, Carl Icahn, and I found the common patterns. If you live by these patterns, you'll have more than enough money. You may not be a billionaire, but you'll have more than enough money. If you violate these rules, the science, you're going to have too much money at the end of the money, you're going to be stressed out. Same thing with your body. We're all biochemically unique, but there are rules you and I both know scientifically that if we violate them, our energy drops. If we align, and we're going to have disease, if we align with them, high energy. So that's the science of achievement. Learn to measure progress. Once you've set up a project now, you want to turn nothing into something, now you must measure your progress. How are you doing? Here's how we teach it to our children. Life expects us to make measurable progress in reasonable time. Measurable progress in reasonable time. That is the game of life. So part of it is not just to set up the proposed project but as we start working on it we start measuring how we're doing now first what is reasonable time you can't ask someone every five minutes how are you doing now see that's too soon guy says I haven't left the building yet give me a break now we can't wait five years that's too long so there's reasonable time so make this note now what is reasonable time one at the end of the day a conversation a father should have with his daughter today because the magic is there. If he waits till tomorrow, the magic may be gone. Today. Next is a week. Make that note. Usually, we get paid by the week. Somebody adds up our value to the marketplace, out comes the check. The next week, somebody adds up our value to the marketplace, out comes the check. What I learned to do is to change my value to the marketplace so the check kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I didn't have to change the economy. I only had to change myself. Measure your own progress. Success is a numbers game. We demanded of our children, how many years do you want your child to spend in fourth grade? Approximately. About one year, right? You say, well, if they're nice kids, would you give them three or four years? You say, no, this is not a nice game. This is getting ready for the future. This is getting ready for the challenges and the opportunities. You can't linger in one grade more than one year. 
Now make this note. The same should go for us as adults. Don't linger more than one year in one grade of learning. Adult, management, entrepreneurship, leaderships of all kind. Keep up the pace of learning. Okay. The numbers. Measure. Count. Now here's the key. Face the truth. If you're only making this much progress, you know, there's no use trying to kid the world, no use trying to kid anybody else, and especially don't kid yourself. If in a period of time you've only made so much progress, you just got to swallow hard and say, this is the truth. I've got to face it. Now, what could I do to start increasing my progress and make my health better, make my income better, make my investments better, make my value to the marketplace much better, get busy learning the second skill and the third skill and the next language and the next language to increase my value. I got to get busy and do that. See if you will do that. I promise you. One of the greatest motivating factors in the world is progress. And if you'll measure it, you'll get excited. If you constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes, eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. First day I went to school, I was in a classroom. By the time I was, uh, you know, six years old, didn't go to school until I was six years old because I was living with my grandmother at that time. Sure. But she had taught me how to read, read the Bible, Bible stories. So I went into the classroom knowing Nicodemus, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I could spell all of those words. I thought I was, you know, I was preaching to the, to my kindergarten teacher. You adult, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> she was like, who is this girl? <laughs> so I was never placed in an environment where I was ever made to feel inferior. I always felt like I'm the smartest kid in this room. And because I was never placed in a, in a never put in a position where I was made to feel less than, sure. I didn't grow up feeling less than, you right. know? And the rest, as they say, is history. And the rest, they say, is history. The... And it's all about what you believe. You know, yeah. I say this to, uh, when I, I do something on my network now called Life Class, the fundamental key to success is what you believe is true for yourself. Not what you want, not what you desire. It's what do you believe? You know, you can say, I want to I wanted be the most successful person in the world. Yeah. But if you believe that there's a glass ceiling and you're going to have a hard time kicking through that glass ceiling, you will down. be defined by the glass ceiling. And um, the great beauty and gift of my life is that I was never defined by the box that other people tried to put me in. The first thing I want you to know that success is, is not a destination. It's a journey. Think of success as a process. Let me, let me illustrate it and explain it this way. Uh, if, if you go to college, uh, you work hard and in, in four or five years, depending on what kind of degree you're working on, and in today's society, sometimes six or seven years, but, but eventually uh, you, you, comes the day of graduation and you're all excited and your family is there and your friends are there and, and you're there with your classmates and you've got your cap and your gown and, and you know that there's going to be a time in that ceremony where you're going to walk across stage and the president, provost, somebody's going to shake your hand, hand you a diploma, congratulate you, and, and you're going to get off the other side, they're going to have presents waiting for you and they'll be taking pictures and everybody will be shaking your hand and say congratulations today you become a success you're, you're a college graduate now now my friend you did not become a success the day that you got your diploma now what you did have happen to you in that ceremony is you got recognized for success the diploma is recognition of what you have done the previous four or five years. You see, 
You were a success in your freshman year when you decided to not drop out of school like some of your other classmates and decided to stick to it. And you were a success every time you studied for a test. And you were a success every time you did a project or, or did a writing assignment. You see, you're a success all through, all through school. Uh, you're a success every day. Success is a daily thing, not a destination thing. The day you got the diploma, you just got recognized for the success that you already were. Now that's very essential because so many times people have a, have a tendency to devalue the moment today. What they do is they greatly value the destination. And so they kind of talk about, well, when I get there, or if I arrive there, or when I do that, or when I accomplish this. And they don't understand that success is a daily thing. And I'm here to share with you that the secret of success is determined by your daily agenda. In fact, I wrote a book a few years ago called Today Matters. I'm passionate about that book because what it does is it helps you, it helps me to understand that we make decisions and then we manage decisions. And, and too often we think, I will make a decision. For example, you're saying, I'm gonna make a decision to be a coach. Or I'm gonna make a decision, not, you know what? I'm gonna make a decision to, to be a public speaker. I wanna be a communicator. Well, congratulations, congratulations, you've made a wonderful decision. Coach, speaking, good decisions. But that won't make you a successful coach. That won't make you a successful communicator. It's not the decision that makes you. You've got to make the decision by managing it. And you manage the decision on a daily basis. In other words, what you want to be tomorrow, you've got to do today. You visualize tomorrow. That gives you hope, and that's your motivation, and that's your dream. You, nothing wrong with that. You visualize tomorrow, but you value today. What's that mean? That means that what I do every day is either getting me closer to that vision, that dream, that goal, or it's really driving me farther away from it. You see, every day, we are either repairing or we're preparing. You see, if I messed up yesterday, guess what I get to do today? Fix yesterday. <laughs> In other words, if I didn't do the right thing yesterday, what I got to do today is I've got to repair. I've got to go back, make amends, backtrack, put the car in reverse, put my life in reverse. I've got to go back there. I've got to repair. Now, every day I spend repairing, I'm not spending preparing. Well, you see, we repair when we fail to manage the decisions that we've made. We prepare when we, on a daily basis, manage the decisions that we've made. So your footprints to success are really footprints of success because every step that is made and taken based upon the goals that you have for your life and you're managing those goals correctly, every step is the progressive realization of success in your life. And by the way, oh, you, you'll get the diploma, you'll get the certificate, but, but when you get that, you didn't arrive. It just is another step in preparing you to reach your potential. Each one of us should live our life as if. We'll never learn everything we never need to learn. We'll never be able to accomplish everything we wanted to accomplish. We won't be able to experience everything we wanted to experience. We should live our life every day hungry, understanding that we are to live until we die. You see, I think success can't be summarized in a flippant degree or program or diploma or arrival. I think today, if you are learning to coach, if you are learning to speak, if you're doing the things that are essential to the decisions and you're managing those decisions well, can I say something to you? Congratulations. You are already a success. Now, guess what? Over time, it shows up. You've heard the expression. You maybe have even said it yourself. You've heard the expression, I'm sure. I've worked all my life to become an overnight success. 
That's the way it works. All of a sudden, somebody recognizes you. All of a sudden, somebody congratulates you. You didn't get good at that moment. You've been good for a long time. It just showed up someday. Tell people your, your concept of the paddle. Well, there's a paddle for everybody's ass. We all know that. And uh, every day you just get up and I don't fear anything, but I worry about everything. And the day you stop worrying in good times, the paddle will get your behind. And, and, and so as great as things are in life, I, I know you're only a, a few steps or a few incidents away from something bad happening. You can never forget it. Did you have fear as a kid? and you just got into enough business scuffles that you figured your way through things, or have you always been fearless? I'm pretty fearless, but I do worry about everything. But, you know, once again, you know, the book, and this is why Harper's asked me to write the book because of all my Tillmanisms, you gotta know what you know and what you don't know. And, and I knew that I understood business. Now don't ask me to, you know, go win an Emmy. I took guitar lessons for four years and I still struggle playing a guitar. I can't draw a stick person very good, but I knew that I understood business. So I, I, I know what I know, and I know how to do due diligence on a deal. I don't worry about making a bad deal because I feel like I, I, that's what I know. So no fear when it comes to that.